This is Bob Scott with NIMS and Associates. And today on our snapshot, we're going to be talking about 1099 processing. Our agenda is going to be setting up a 1099 vendor, entering a normal AP bill and, and flagging it as a 1099 event. Also editing an AP bill to make them a 1099 event, even if it's been released. Sometimes people make mistakes and they didn't flag a bill to be a 1099 event. And loading starting 1099 balances for vendors in case you're in the first year of your Acumatica journey. That can come in handy. Printing 1099 forms and creating a 1099 e-file to send to the IRS. Setting up a vendor to be a 1099 vendor. Setting up a vendor to be a 1099 vendor. In Acumatica vendor maintenance, select a vendor that is previously not set up to be a 1099 vendor. On the general information tab, click to enable 1099 processing for the vendor. Then select the 1099 box that the vendor is going to be using. This can be changed on a invoice by invoice basis. This happens to be just a default. On the purchases setting tabs, the taxpayer ID goes in here. Save your changes, and that sets up this vendor for 1099 processing. Creating a 1099 AP bill. To enter an AP bill that is a 1099 event, go to bills and adjustments. Select a vendor that has been previously assigned a 1099 status. In Acumatica, the invoice is not flagged as being a 1099 invoice. Each line on the invoice is flagged as being a 1099 invoice. When you're entering a AP bill, the line inherits the setup from the vendor. So previously, we had flagged this vendor as being a 1099 vendor. So therefore, every invoice inherits that. If you don't want this to be a 1099 invoice, just take out the 1099 box information and it won't be a 1099. If we do want it to be a 1099 invoice, select the appropriate box or accept the default, take it off hold, and release it. Editing a released AP bill to be a 1099 event. If a vendor has been flagged as a 1099 vendor, part way through the year, but earlier in the year, there are invoices and checks processed for that vendor. It's important that we go back and we fix those invoices up. Acumatica has the unique ability of allowing the 1099 information on an invoice that's been released and even paid to have its 1099 setting changed. The setting can be changed to include it in 1099 process or to exclude it from 1099 processing. So when editing and reviewing your 1099 information, keep that in mind that you can go back to the invoice, locate the 1099 box, and enter the box information. Acumatic will allow you to save that information. And provided that this bill has been paid with the 1099 calendar year, it will be included in 1099 processing. Loading vendor 1099 starting balances. If you're in the middle of a conversion or you, for some reason, need to edit in a lump sum manner 1099 amounts that are going to be incurred for a vendor, kind of a, a pro tip about changing balances is to use the quick check feature. Using quick checks, you can manipulate 1099 amounts without causing journal entries to impact the general ledger. It is important to note, though, that this method of editing and plugging in 1099 amounts will cause an impact on the cash reconciliation, and both the check and its resulting entry are going to need to be cleared. To enter in a 1099 amount, select a vendor. I've chosen to select a payment method called MC for manual check. 
which will indicate that the amount that I'm going to plug in is not going to be printed as a check. When entering the line for this 1099 plug process, enter in the amount that you want the 1099 to uh, inherit, but change the general ledger account to become the cash account. The same account is up here, 10200. This will cause the debit and the credit to go to the same account, thus eliminating any general ledger impact. It will have an impact on the bank reconciliation. There will be a cash receipt and a cash disbursement on the bank reconciliation. Both of those will need to be cleared, and provided both of those are cleared, there will be no impact on the reconciliation process. Change the 1099 box appropriately. Release the quick check. And away you go. Printing 1099 forms and reviewing 1099 data. In Acumatica, there are three different tools to review 1099 vendor balances prior to printing out 1099 forms or generating your e-file. Those tools are the 1099 vendor history, which shows history by 1099 type of a single vendor, 1099 summary, which will show you a summary of all vendors and their 1099 amounts and 1099 year details. The 1099 year details are, is particularly well suited to editing and reviewing 1099 data prior to printing the 1099 forms. If we start with vendor history, you can see that I can select a vendor, I can select a year, and it will show the 1099 amount. We look at 1099 summary, A single line will be shown for the 1099 amounts for a particular vendor for a particular year. If we look at 1099 details, every invoice that is considered 1099-able is included and this really gives a controller or an accountant a good ability to look at invoices and determine if any should be included or excluded from the report now this report only shows invoices that are included for 1099 purposes if we were to say that a particular line shouldn't be included then you can go and edit the released invoice take off the 1099 box off the AP bill line, and it would be dropped from this report. When printing 1099 forms, Acumatica provides a 1099 miscellaneous form for 1099 printing. Running the report will generate the form for anybody that's included. This can be printed and stuffed into envelopes and you're done. A pro tip on the 1099 form is that you can actually embed through editing the form the actual IRS background for a 1099 form, which would eliminate the need for actually going out and buying 1099 forms. Generating a 1099 e-file that can be sent to the IRS. The IRS has rules about who must file an e-file, IRS e-file for 1099. Generally, the rules are centered around the number of 1099s that you need to file. Acumatica conveniently has the ability out of the box to create e-files. During the e-file process, you can get a listing of all the vendors and their dollar amounts that are going to be generated in the file. And then you can tell it to process all. If I process that, you can see that it has created a file. 
and that file is in a perfect format for being able to be sent to the IRS, uploaded to their website, and therefore processed by the IRS. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to subscribe to our channel and get more information about NIMS and Associates, please use the convenient links up above. For more information about NIMS and Associates, Zach Matka, contact Henry Kim, hkim at nimsassociates.com. Thank you.